Welcome to Watchmen on the Wall, a daily outreach of Southwest Radio Ministries and SWRC.com. God is still on the throne, and prayer changes things. This week, we're debuting a new children's book and a brand new television series. And all this week, we're visiting with some of the speakers that will be presenting at our upcoming Prophecy in the News Live event in Gettysburg. Thanks to many of you, I am able to announce today that we have met our $100,000 match. Individuals and families from all across the country responded, and the match has been met. So thank you, friends, for your continued financial support of Watchmen on the Wall and Southwest Radio Ministries. Author and teacher Mac Dominic will be speaking at our upcoming Gettysburg event to preview his topics and give us an insider's look at what to expect when he takes the stage in Gettysburg. Welcome to the program today. I am your host, Micah Van Hus. I produce Marginal Mysteries for Southwest Radio Ministries. At Marginal Mysteries, we look at God's awesome creation. We look at the mysterious things about it, the things in the margin, and we ask questions about all of it. We're not afraid to ask the questions. Any question and everything from Bigfoot to UFOs to Nephilim, Anything mysterious about God's creation, we study it at Marginal Mysteries. You can visit Marginal Mysteries at MarginalMysteries.com. MarginalMysteries.com. You can check out all of my books, t-shirts, etc. also on SWRC.com. Today we're going to talk about the things that I and myself and Mac Dominic are going to be talking about at the Gettysburg Conference. Make sure that if you are able, you come out to the Gettysburg Conference. It is October the 17th through the 19th of this year, and we are going to have a number of speakers talking about different things, different topics in Gettysburg. We have Dr. Larry Spargimino, Dr. Kenneth Hill, Donald Perkins, Dr. William Federer, Dr. Lonnie Shipman, Dr. Douglas Petrovich, Mac Dominic, Josh Davis, Dr. Greg Patton, Larry Stam, my brother Clayton Van Hus, and myself. Micah Van Hus. We will be talking about all kinds of awesome topics, most of them dealing with prophecy, obviously mine dealing with the mysterious stuff, Clayton's dealing with the archaeological stuff. We have a number of different themes, but the theme of the entire conference is about prophecy. And I will be speaking both days, uh, two days, I will be speaking on The Earth As It Was, which was my second book. In The Earth As It Was, we talk about the giants in scripture. We talk about the world as it was before the flood of Noah. That would lead into dinosaurs, the firmament, the environment on the planet before the flood of Noah. And then we get into the watchers that are mentioned in Genesis chapter 6 that descended in the days of Jared. We talk about the earth, the giants that came back after the flood as well. So that'll be one of my topics, the earth as it was. Again, my second book, which you can get on marginalmysteries.com. Mac Dominic will be talking about the future of Babylon, which goes a bit into Babylon as it relates in the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, as it relates to the end times. Another topic that Mac Dominic will be speaking on is one of my favorite topics that he speaks on, and that is Jesus the Gatekeeper. Jesus the Gatekeeper is a fascinating study and discussion about what Jesus does on the earth for those three days that his body is dead. When Jesus dies on the cross, his body is put in the tomb, but his spirit is on the earth for three days, and he does a number of things. And this uh, Jesus of the Gatekeeper discussion is about that. So fascinating. So in 1 Peter chapter 3, he goes down into the abyss, and he proclaims his victory to the spirits that made trouble in the days of Noah. As the host of Marginal Mysteries, this is right up my alley. We talk about the spirits that made trouble in the days of Noah. We're talking about the Bnei Elohim, the sons of God in Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, Job chapter 2, the book of Isaiah, the book of Peter, books of Peter, the book of Jude. All throughout scripture, we find these spirits that made trouble in the days of Noah. Now, we also find out about them in a number of other ancient books, primarily the book of Enoch, which is not an inspired word of God but a historical book nonetheless. And so Jesus the gatekeeper talks about how Jesus goes down into the abyss, and without giving away the whole thing, he gets the keys to hell and the keys to paradise 
And he goes out of the abyss and he releases the souls from paradise and he takes them to Mount Hermon, which is a physical location on this earth. I was there just about a year ago. In fact, a year ago, I was there right now in August of last year at Mount Hermon. Mount Hermon is prolific in scripture. It is where in Genesis chapter 6, the watchers descended from heaven to rebel against God. They descended on top of Mount Hermon. We, at the foothills of Hermon, we find the gates of hell where pan worship took place. Again, I was there at the gates of hell a year ago. Amazing looking place. If you've never heard of it, Google the gates of hell and it is a scary looking place uh, for Baal worship and pan worship. So Jesus goes to Mount Hermon and this is where he says on this rock, I will build my church. This is before he dies physically and goes down into the abyss. He says on this rock, I will build my church. And that is the foundation for the Pope Papacy, the Pope of the Catholic Church. They claim that Jesus was talking about Peter, that on this rock, that Peter was that rock, and that his church would be built. So Peter's considered the first pope. But in fact, Jesus was not talking about Peter. Jesus was talking about the literal rock on which they were standing, which was Mount Hermon. So Jesus takes these souls from paradise. If you remember on the cross, Jesus says to the thief, today you will be with me in paradise. So Jesus takes these souls from paradise, and he takes them to Mount Hermon in their spiritual forms, And that is where he ascends into heaven. Fascinating topic by Mac Dominic there. My other topic, we'll be capping off the entire conference Saturday night with Secret Societies. Now, Secret Societies is my third book. It is my latest book. And in that presentation, we talk about the Earth's secret societies, all the way from before the flood of Noah, which would be the Serpent Brotherhood, carrying through the knowledge of the Watchers through the flood, inscribing the knowledge of the Watchers on the pillars that Hermes finds, and he shares that knowledge with Nimrod, who was the first rebellious, on a large scale, rebellious leader against God. And he discovers the knowledge of the Watchers through Hermes that was carried on through the Emerald Tablet through the flood from the sons of Lamech who recorded it before the flood. And then in the secret societies, that brings us into the Solar Brotherhood of Egypt, one of the first prominent the first prominent secret society after the flood. And that leads us into the Knights Templar, all the way through the Illuminati, the Freemasons, their influence on the United States of America, their goals, what they're trying to accomplish in the world today, and what their end game is, which will be partially to usher in the battle of Armageddon against God. The secret societies are trying to Tell mankind that we don't need God, that we will one day become gods ourselves. What did the serpent tell Eve in the Garden of Eden? said, if you eat this fruit, you will become as God. These are uh, the topics that I'm talking about at the Gettysburg Prophecy Conference. Again, the dates are October 17th, 18th, and 19th. Make sure you go to swrc.com to register for the Gettysburg Conference or go to marginalmysteries.com where you can click that link as well and see all of my books and t-shirts and other things. Our biggest event of the year is almost here. Prophecy in the News Live comes to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania for three full days, October 17th through the 19th. A dozen speakers focusing on Bible prophecy, the rise of the one world system, and biblical mysteries. Right now, through September 30th, All hotel bookings made through our host hotel, the Wyndham Gettysburg, will include one free general admission ticket to our three-day Prophecy in the News Live event. Additionally, guests with a confirmed room reservation will receive one free copy of Bill Federer's brand new book, Silence Equals Consent, and an exclusive discount on all resources purchased on site during the event. Book your hotel room today at our host hotel and receive one free admission ticket, a free copy of Bill Federer's new book, and a special discount card that can be used all weekend at the event. Take advantage of this special offer now through September 30th. Visit swrc.com and click on the red Prophecy in the News Live banner at the top of the homepage, or simply call 1-800-652-1144. Prophecy in the News Live, Gettysburg. October 17th through the 19th. Register today. Here's another Gettysburg speaker, Donald Perkins, who's ready for the next installment of his Understanding Revelation series. 
Today is part eight, and we're looking at the Church of Smyrna. But you know, before we go there, I want to continue with one last verse to the letter of the Church of Ephesus. And I'm going to read the latter part of Revelation chapter two, verse number seven. It says, Jesus said to him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now, what we're going to see as we're going forward in all of the letters, Jesus encourages each church by giving them a word of encouragement in reference to them overcoming and them receiving a blessing from him. Now, I really like this uh, in chapter two, verse seven uh, to the church of Ephesus, he says, if you overcome, I'm going to give it to you to eat of the tree of life. And I'm going to talk about that tree of life in a few minutes. Now, uh, he, he also mentioned this tree of life in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse number two. Jesus mentioned in Revelation 22, two, in the midst of the street of it on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. I want to give you one more verse here. Revelation 22, verse 14. Jesus said, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of that city or the gates of the city. Now, Jesus promised the church of Ephesus, if you overcome, you will be allowed to eat of the tree of life. Now, we know that tree of life. It was that very tree that was first found in the Garden of Eden, that tree that God blocked Adam and Eve where they could not eat of that tree in the state of sin that they were in. You know, the Bible tells us in Genesis that when Adam and Eve, uh, when they sin, God cast them out of the Garden of Eden on the east. And he put a, a cherub with a flaming sword there to block Adam and Eve so they could not eat of the tree of life. Nowhere do you hear of the tree of life being on planet Earth until you get to the end of the story, which is the book of Revelation. Uh, chapters 21 and 22, where he talks about the tree of life being on planet Earth here after God has renovated planet Earth and removed all of the sin and the sorrow and the devil out of the earth. God again brings the tree of life on planet Earth. But you know something? God promised the church. He says, if you overcome, you will be able to eat of the tree of life. You know, I'm longing for the day when I can eat of the tree of life. You know, I just read a verse to you in Revelation 22, 2, where he said in the midst of the street of it on either side was, uh, of the river was there the tree of life, which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. Now, I love that every month. The Bible says in the new heavens and new earth, the tree of life is going to yield a new fruit every month. And we will be able to partake as, as the, as the redeemed, as the righteous, as the sons of God, as those who have overcome this world, we are the ones who will be able to eat of the tree of life, the very tree that Adam and Eve could not eat of in that sinful state. But then, you know, God goes on to say something that's so amazing here. Jesus said something amazing. He said the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Now, I believe this gives reference to those nations uh, that are born again during the time of the millennial kingdom that are coming out of the millennium going into the eternal world. God will allow them because they're born again. They're washing the blood of Christ. They are Christians. They are believers. They save. They are saved. They will be able to eat of the leaves of the tree for eternal life. Again, this is a promise to those that overcome. Chapter 22, verse 14, Jesus said, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have a right. Listen to this, have a right to the tree of life and may enter in, uh, in through the gates into the city. This time about going into the new Jerusalem. The scripture says here, because you, you've kept his commandments, you will have a right to eat of the tree of life. Now we know that commandment is that we must believe on Christ in order to have salvation. We must love God, you know, as the scripture also talks about the first and greatest commandments. Uh, we do all those things through Christ. But again, we're born again. That gives us a right uh, uh, to go into uh, the new Jerusalem. And it's so exciting. Now, I want to go back to the text again. Revelation chapter two, verse seven, as we come out, coming out to a close of the Ephesus letter. Jesus said to him that overcometh 
What does that mean to him that overcome it? You know, we overcome this world and I'm going to give you some examples of what the Bible says in reference to overcome. Look with me in the gospel of John chapter 16, verse number 33. We'll look at how to overcome this world. Now we overcome through Christ. We know that, but I'm going to give you some biblical examples of how we overcome here in verse 33. Scripture says, these things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. Jesus talking that you might have peace. He said in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now, Jesus said here that we might have peace in what he's given us. Jesus said, hey, you're going to have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We overcome the world by surrendering our life to Jesus Christ. That's how you overcome. You surrender your life to the Savior. And if you overcome, the Bible says you'll have a right to eat of the tree of life. Now, let me give you another one. Look at this. First John chapter five. I love this. Verses four and five. John wrote for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. If you born again, you overcome the world. This is what he says. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God. You know something? When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that makes you an overcomer. And therefore, it qualifies you to be a partaker of the tree of life that is in the midst of the paradise of God. The Bible says we overcome at this world, even of our faith. We overcome by our faith in Christ. You know, I'm going to heaven not because I'm a good person. I'm going to heaven because what Jesus Christ has done for me. I believe on his death, burial and resurrection. So therefore, I am an overcomer and you can also be that overcomer. Now, how do we overcome? I'm giving another verse. Look at this. First John chapter two, verse number 13. The apostle John wrote, he said, I write unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. Now, I'm going to continue on with the verse, but I want to stop here. He said, I write unto you, young men, because ye, ye have overcome the wicked one. How do we overcome the wicked one? How do we overcome the devil? Well, let's go on to verse uh, 14 of 1 John. Verse 14 says, I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men. Listen at this. Because ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you and ye have overcome the wicked one. How do we overcome today, saints? We overcome by abiding in the word of God. We allow the word of God to be our everyday uh, sus sustenance, our, our, uh, our daily bread. You overcome the wicked one by allowing the word of God to be a part of your daily life. I like this. Young men, because ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you and you have overcome the wicked one. You have the word of God in you. You have a daily diet and dose of the word of God every day. It's going to make you an overcomer of the of the wiles of the devil. Now, here's another one. Look at this. First John chapter four, verse number four. John wrote, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. How do we overcome? We allow God who is in us to overcome this world through us. He says, and ye, uh, uh, you have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You know, so when you get born again, God becomes a part of you. Jesus comes inside of you and he lives through you when you allow him through his spirit. You allow the Holy Spirit to work through you. But the Bible says we overcome them. We overcome this world by allowing God to work uh, in our lives. Now, I'm going to give you this, this other one here. This is Revelation chapter 12 here. Uh, we're going to look here at verse number 11. And I love this. Here's another way we overcome the world. Listen at this. Scripture says here, and they overcame him, the devil, 
by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives until the death. Listen to this. They overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. You know, your testimony is powerful when you testify to a world of what God has done in your life. You know, one great testimony is the fact that you're born again. When you get saved, you need to testify to the world that Jesus delivered you from the world. He delivered you from bondage and from sickness and from uh, from hangups and addictions. You know, when you do that, you're overcoming the world. But I love this. They overcame by the blood of the lamb. You know, the blood of Christ is the most powerful thing because it's with that blood that Jesus paid the price to redeem humanity. The blood of Christ is powerful and it's applied to our lives when we become Christians. So. I want to close the latter part of that first letter to the church of Ephesus uh, by looking at uh, the, the promise of overcoming, receiving the, 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 a right to eat of the tree of life, and also looking at how we overcome. Now, let's move a step further in our study here. And now we're going to begin to look at the church called Smyrna. Uh, we find this in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, uh, verses uh, 8 through 11. Now, this church called Smyrna, uh, the name itself is really powerful, and it kind of gives us a little clue in reference to this letter uh, as to how Jesus is dealing with the church of Smyrna. Uh, as we talked in our opening, we talked about the persecuted church around the world. There are, there are over 50 countries around the world that for Christians, it's a death sentence. Christians are persecuted. Even in the 21st centuries, Christians are dying for their faith. And again, it's very hard to live a Christian life in some places. Now, I want to start off here with a quote, quote from a book called Unlocking the Last Days. And he's given some reference in uh, in reference to the name Smyrna. Listen to what he says. The name Smyrna means bitter and is related to the word myrrh. After the birth of Jesus, the Magi from the east came bearing gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Matthew chapter two, verse 11, the gold spoke of the fact that Jesus was born the king of the Jews. And more importantly, he is the king of kings. Frankincense was an expensive incense that pointed, uh, pointed to Jesus as being the high priest and spoke of his deity. Deity means the state of being God. He was God. The third gift was myrrh, a spice used uh, used in the preparation of a body for burial. So the uh, gold represented his royalty, the frankincense, his deity, and the myrrh, his humanity. Again, we're going to see here that the, the myrrh of the, of the word uh, Smyrna is tied to suffering. And truly, this is what our Savior did. I want to quote one other scholar here, Dr. David Jeremiah from his book, Escape the Coming Night. Listen to what he says about Smyrna. He says, Smyrna was was the proudest, proudest and most beautiful city of Asia. It is considered by historians as the most exquisite city the Greeks ever built. The city sloped uh, to to the sea and along the sides of the hill was a large amphitheater where more than 20,000 people could sit. It was there that the worship of Caesar was centered. By the time the book of Revelation was written, emperor worship was compulsory. The churches were persecuted because they wouldn't bow to Caesar and burn incense in the temple dedicated to Kaiser Kyrios. Caesar is Lord. The church would not bow to that. And again, the church of Smyrna, we're going to see this church would not bow to that. Uh, a Smyrna, we're going to see this was an area where the church was highly persecuted. And again, we're going to see some amazing things here. So now I want to go to chapter two of Revelation, verse number eight. We're going to start here and listen how Jesus addressed the church of Smyrna. He said unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, write These things said the first and the last which was dead and is alive. Now we're going to see here the way Jesus addressed the church of Smyrna is dealing with how John saw him uh, uh, in the revelation and the glorified vision of Christ. Jesus takes a portion of what John saw in Revelation chapter one, and he ties it into the letter that he's dealing with the church of Smyrna. Smyrna is a persecuted church. Many of them will die for their faith. 
Jesus here is telling them, I'm the first and the last. I'm the one who was dead and who is now alive forevermore. Uh, let me give you the verse that it's found in Revelation chapter one, verse 18. Jesus said, I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Jesus is letting the church of Smyrna, this persecuted church, know that there was a time I died, but now I'm risen from the dead. Now I am alive. Again, he addresses this little church Smyrna regarding its coming suffering and its faithfulness to Christ. Jesus wanted to remind them that he once was killed for being Christ, but now he is alive forevermore. And he wanted he wanted them to know that they would as well rise again one day as he did. He encouraged them to be faithful unto death and he would bless them. Uh, he would bless their modern modernness uh, forever in eternity. He wanted them to realize that this season in their life was but for a moment. Afterwards, rewards would be eternal and that they would literally receive the crown of life. It's called the martyr's crown. Now, again, Jesus letting them know I was the one who was dead, but now I'm alive forevermore. We're going to see here as this letter progresses that Jesus is looking at this church and he's talking to them. He's, he's, he's actually going to encourage them to be faithful uh, unto death. And as they are faithful unto death, uh, that they would actually have eternal life and even a crown of life. Now, let's move on to verse number nine. Jesus told the church of Smyrna, he says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. But he said, thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Donald Perkins will return on future programs to continue his teaching series on the book of Revelation. Donald Perkins' series, Understanding the Book of Revelation, is now available. This 24-DVD set contains all 71 lessons going verse by verse studying the Book of Revelation. Order Understanding the Book of Revelation by Donald Perkins today when you call 1-800-652-1144. That's 1-800-652-1144. You can also order on our website, swrc.com. This study is an excellent resource for churches, Sunday school classes, small group studies, and homeschool Bible classes. 71 lessons on 24 DVDs. Understanding the Book of Revelation. 1-800-652-1144. Watchman on the Wall is a production of Southwest Radio Ministries and is supported by faithful listeners like you visit swrc.com.